Photography can get expensive quick, from investing in your equipment to education to studio and furniture. But the question all photographers ask themselves, how exactly do you know what you should invest in? Well, good news. That's what we're talking about today. Hey, boudoir photographers. Are you ready to be totally booked out with high paying clients? I'm Tracy Lynn, and I went from side hustle photographer to running a million dollar boudoir photography business, working just 30 hours a month. That's right, just 30 hours a month. On this podcast, I tell you how I did it and how you can too. Hey, and welcome back. Today, I'm focusing on investments, more specifically, education investments. I'm sure by now, you know, I'm a big believer in investing in education. That's the best way to grow your business. And I really believe that because I focused on investing in my education instead of the latest and greatest equipment, that's really why my business grew as fast as it did. And I'm on a mission to make sure photographers know that education is more important than equipment. Honestly, you could probably make a lot of money as a professional photographer with an iPhone if you invested the time to learn how to use that iPhone camera well and you knew how to run an amazing business. Do I recommend this? No, absolutely not. But I'm just saying that you could. Now, of course, when I started my business, I made sure I had the necessities, a decent camera, a lens I liked, and the lighting equipment I need. But after that, my investments revolved around education. And here's something you may not know. I've invested $50,000 in education in my boudoir business alone, and that sounds insane, right? But because of those investments, I've also brought in $1.5 million just in boudoir photography revenue since mid-2017, and I opened my St. Louis studio in early 2016, so I know it's actually quite a bit more than that, but that was before I was keeping or even knew how to do any accounting at all. Thankfully, I don't have that issue anymore, and if you're struggling with it, I'd recommend getting this under control as soon as possible. That's another topic for another episode, though, because today we're talking about the investments I think all photographers should make in their photography business. Now, the first investment a photographer should make is a business coach. I know, I know, a photography business coach putting business coaching as number one. Shocker, right? Seriously, though, your business foundations like pricing, software and systems, accounting, of course, marketing your business, that should be your number one priority. This is how you make money. This is how you're going to be able to leave your nine to five faster and make photography your full time career. And I say it often, but I've seen a lot of talented photographers fail at business because they weren't taking the business side seriously. They thought their work should speak for itself. That's not really how it works, unfortunately. And I've also seen decent or mediocre photographers succeed because they took the business side seriously. They invested time. They invested money into learning how to run a business, how to market their services, and how to stay booked out. And that's exactly why you need a business coach. It's so much easier to learn from other photographers' mistakes and just take the blueprint what's already working to accelerate your growth. There are so many photography business coaches out there. Do your research. Figure out which one you like which business model you feel would work best for you. Unfortunately, we're not all just natural business owners. Some of us are, but for the most part, running a business is a learned skill. So you need to invest time and money into growing your business in the best way for you, your lifestyle, and your business model. Yes, I do think that you need to know your camera well, and maybe by a posing guide so you know what to do at the session. But more importantly, you need to invest in creating a business that will be sustainable for the long haul if you truly want to make photography your full-time career. The second investment a boudoir photographer should make is in a posing guide. Make sure you understand how to shoot in manual. To be honest, that's incredibly important. Yet some photographers, they don't know how or they're still shooting in auto to be safe. If that's you, I'm going to leave a recommendation for a book to read. This is the book that I read that helped me learn manual in less than a week. It's called Understanding Exposure. But other than learning how to shoot in manual, when you're starting your business, a great set of poses is all you really need. Even though I know a lot of photographers will argue with me on that point and I'm ready to handle those arguments, I really believe this. The sequence of poses needs to be a set that you know will sell every single session. 
It's always good to be inspired by other things, whether that's magazine photos, Instagram images from other photographers, or even models, or something else totally. Believe me, when I was starting my career, Calvin Klein editorial photos were my go-to, and it was my favorite kind of inspiration. But sometimes it's just better to invest in a posing guide or two so that you can also see exactly how other photographers pose each client, and it'll just make things easier for you. The third investment a boudoir photographer should make is in a workshop with your favorite photographer. After you've gotten your business going and you're making money, now it's time for the fun stuff. Your business should be solid up to this point. You're providing an amazing experience to your current clients. You've got your business foundations in place and you know your pricing is solid and you're making money. You're confident in the service you provide, even if you feel your work could be better. That's when you know it's time to invest in a photography workshop, and that's exactly what I did. I worked really, really hard to build a solid business, a solid product, a solid experience. No, I wasn't blowing anyone away with the images I created at that point, but my business was solid and profitable. And that's when I went to my first Jerry Guionis five-day workshop and focused on the art that I was creating. And my work leveled up so much. And then I went to another Jerry Guionis five-day workshop and my work leveled up again. And then next year I did a private mentorship with Jerry and leveled up even more. When you invest in a photography workshop, take it seriously. Go home and practice, implement what you've learned, and a few things will happen. One, you get even more confident in your pricing because you've leveled up. Number two, clients start paying even more attention to your business with this next level work you're creating. And number three, your schedule starts booking out even further in advance. But first, let's back up a minute because you're probably asking yourself, if this is true, why wouldn't you start with a workshop and then go with a business coach? Well, the reason that I think business comes first is because you need to have a business built that can support and sustain the growth that you're going to get after you've leveled up your art. It's almost a sure thing that a photographer will burn out if they start booking so many clients without having their foundations in place to handle the growth, without having their pricing exactly right to handle this influx of new clients. Sure, the growth takes a little bit longer than you like, but you'll still be a photographer five to ten years from now, whereas the photographers who try to grow super fast, they're going to burn out long before you. Now, does that make sense? I'm honestly not trying to say this and talk you into investing in your business. I'm saying this so that you're still here 10 years from now, so that you still love your business. The fourth investment a boudoir photographer should make is in a retouching course or workshop. And you're probably like, Tracy, I've heard you say I'm not a retoucher, I'm a photographer. And I actually got this saying from Jerry Giannis, but it does hit home. The thing is, you've got to know how to retouch. You've got to know what you like. You've got to create a style that's your own so that you can stand out from the crowd of photographers. It is imperative that you stand out in your niche in order to book more clients. But the reason you need to know how to retouch is because you need to know how to explain your style to the retoucher. You need to know what to tell your retoucher in order to help them achieve your style once you are outsourcing. And you will outsource eventually. This is important too. Outsourcing is going to help you scale your business as well because it gives you time to work on money making activities. And those are like marketing or photographing more clients. Here's something I think every photographer should do. Know the difference between working in your business and working on your business. Now working in your business, those are the things that are a part of your job, like shooting, retouching, album design, ordering sessions, even client correspondence. Working on your business means anything strategic, such as marketing and business growth and development, the things that are going to help you scale your business. For a photographer, the things that you should do when working in your business are photographing sessions, ordering sessions, client correspondence, which should be automated as much as possible. Basically, anything that's client-facing are the things that you're doing when you're working in your business. That being said, there's going to be a point when it's time to outsource even more of your client-facing responsibilities. That's an episode that will be coming up in the near future, though. Here are a few things that you can outsource as soon as possible. Retouching and album design if you want to. Honestly, my album design only takes like five minutes, so I actually still do it. But retouching is an absolute get-that-off-your-plate-as-soon-as-possible task. 
Now, when talking about the things that you should do when working on your business, I'm going to say almost everything. The only thing that you can remove from your plate really would be your accounting. And possibly if you're using Facebook ads, you could let someone else manage those if you're not comfortable. Maybe SEO, although I do have something coming up in the future that's going to help you with this. But I truly think that your spare time is spent working on activities to book more clients, blogging, email marketing, social media, networking, updating your website, increasing your pricing. So I say all of this to say that, yes, you need to know how to retouch, but you also should know when it's time to outsource as well. And if you want me to do an episode that's all about outsourcing, DM me on Instagram and let me know. If enough of you have requested, I will be happy to put that together. And the fifth and final investment a boudoir photographer has to make is in their equipment. You didn't think that I was going to say that, I know. But after you've made these education investments, now I think it's time to upgrade your equipment after you've built your business, after you've invested in learning the equipment you already have, after you've made money to pay for the new equipment outright. That's when you can invest in that camera you're dreaming of or the new lighting equipment or that lens. But at the same time, honestly, it's not even necessary. I actually had this conversation with my associate photographer just the other day. She told me that she felt like she has to upgrade her camera before she starts shooting with me. And I told her she totally could if that's what she wanted. She didn't have to at all. I was not requesting her to invest. She still has a very nice Nikon 850 and the same lens that I was using. And I know you guys know my camera is still the Canon 5D Mark III from 2015, which I bought used, and a 70 to 200 I bought used as well. And I say all that to say you don't have to invest unless you want to or your camera does break or something like that. But after you've built your business up with the other investments we've talked about, a business coach, posing guide, workshop with your favorite photographer, and you know how to retouch and you have nailed your style, then you can invest if you actually want to. Now, if you get just one thing from this episode, what I want you to understand is that nailing your business foundation, pricing, and marketing strategy is far more important than your actual art. Remember, talent doesn't always win, and that's especially true with photography. The better business owner is going to scale much faster than the more talented photographer. And that's why I want to talk about my new program, Six Figure Simplified. This group program is the exact method I take my private coaching clients through, except it's a group program and about a quarter of the price of coaching. In this program, we're covering the 6FS method, and we start with simplifying your business. We're going to create ease in your business so you have more time to find and book clients and give them an amazing experience or just more time to yourself. In the business section, we cover accounting, pricing, scheduling, and just overall creating a healthy, sustainable, and profitable business. Then we'll move on to simplifying your sessions. And really what we're focusing on is learning how to run your entire client experience with ease while still making those high sales, creating beautiful art, and keeping everything organized and streamlined just to make your overall process easier. So you're not spending time doing a whole lot of busy work. And then we move on to simplifying your marketing. And I share my set it and forget it marketing strategy with step-by-step trainings to ensure your marketing works for you. There's tons of swipe files, templates, and so much more. We focus on the 6FS marketing method. We are covering websites, fast cash strategies, staying forever booked out, SEO, Google business profiles, and so much more. And then... I just added my scale to six figures method and what we're doing in five trainings plus more to be added soon. We're covering next level things like outsourcing analytics, protecting your business in case of tragedy and even how to hire an associate photographer and when to know you're ready. We're really taking it to that next level. That's what this entire module is about. But remember, this is also a group program, meaning you're going to get the Facebook group, which is just a community of photographers. I'll be in there every day, making sure everyone is doing perfectly well, answering all the questions you have. Then we will also have two group calls a month. So 12 in total. This is a six month program where we will spend all the time we need making sure that every question is answered and you know exactly what you need to do and when inside your business. I've also added a new bonus this week, which is just my website audit. 
And what I'm doing is everybody is sending in their website for review by me. And I'm going to record a Loom video of everyone's website, telling them exactly what they need to fix so that they can start converting leads into clients with ease. If you're ready to join, make sure you head on over to the link in the episode description and let's get started. Thank you for listening to this episode of Sustainable Freedom with Boudoir Photography. Please be sure to rate and follow so that you never miss an episode. They drop every Thursday and they're always full of super actionable information for you to apply right now in your boudoir business. Until then, make your next shoot your best shoot.